So today we're starting the new unit. It's called absolute value and reciprocal functions. Um, the absolute value is not overly difficult at first, um, but when we start to do equations, you're going to feel that it's pretty challenging. Okay, so the absolute value of a number can be defined as the principal square root of the square of the number. Like that's a mouthful for sure. Um, but what we know about the absolute value is that it's always positive. So you can put a little star on this note right here. The absolute value of a number is never negative. So this is the formal definition here. So the absolute value of 6. So like what happens when you square something? always always positive and then when we square root that this answer here it just goes back to where it was right yep. and when they mention principle square root remember that sometimes we write plus or minus the square root well the principle uh, they're just talking about the positive version of that um, you won't really have to worry about that definition of the absolute value for a while, maybe in a calculus course if you ever get there. But for the most part, you'd rather think about absolute value with this stop note. Usually, when you're first getting introduced to it, it's much easier just to go with this definition. And the stop note is saying that the absolute value is just a distance from zero. Okay, and we know we can't have negative distances. So you just say, what is the absolute value of six? And those vertical bars are the symbols. Those are the symbols. So that's right here. That's just the symbol for absolute value. So how far is six from zero? Well, it's six. And then what's the absolute value of negative 6? Well, how far is negative 6 from, yes, yeah, just 6. And then for physics students, often you would want to talk about only the magnitude of the vector. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, what are you working on? Quadratics, that's done. Now you're on rationals? Rationals. You're on that now? Okay. You're watching videos? Okay. Thanks for checking in. Okay. So back to what I was saying. So, like, if you were doing, like, um, a force vector and, like, you didn't care about the direction, you would just do this. So I only care about the size. I don't care which way it goes. I only care about the size. So you think about this. I guess it would take science 10. You've got to have taken science 10, right? Yeah. W like you have distance and you have displacement, right? So if you go 5 kilometers west and then 7 kilometers east and you add those, you have to take into account for direction, right? Well, with absolute value, you, are just, you do not care about direction and it's just the magnitude, only just the size. Only the size matters. Only size matters and you put not the direction. The direction does not matter. I don't care that it's going negative. I don't care. All right? Is that decently clear? Get a sense of it? Yes. Thank you for the enthusiasm. Okay, let me just zoom in a bit and we'll go through these quite quickly. Uh, here we go. Okay, so. 3 and 3. Any questions with that? So absolute value, all it does is it essentially changes negatives to positives and it keeps positives positives. Basically, we don't care about the, the direction. We only care about the size. I'll just open up the graphing calculator to demonstrate how to find this feature. So you hit the math button. And then 
you s tab over to number, N-U-M, and it's the very first one. It says A-B-S. So absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Are you guys okay with that? All right. And you can think of you can think of the absolute value as you would think of as like parentheses or brackets. So what that is saying is like do the absolute value first in terms of your bed mass. You do that first and then you can take care of the multiplication. So like this one here, absolute value of 8 equals 8. So that's the answer to this. And then a negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. So you got to do it in the proper order. Okay. And for the next one, it's the same answer. So why? The negative outside stays. Do the absolute value of negative 8. What do you get? 8. Negative 1 times 8, negative 8. And luckily, you'll see that you could type that into the calculator. It will actually do it for you. But it's nice to be able to do this stuff by hand. And a lot of you might look at E and just want to put 0. But it's actually 7 plus 7, 14. So absolute value. And for F, you think about like the brackets. OK, I'm going to do the brackets first. So 1 minus 5, and then the absolute value of that result all right again with the do inside the bracket first you're trying to clean up the bracket first so what's the square root of 81 and then the absolute value of negative 9 and you get your answer negative 9 so I'm writing out all the steps so that you can see the logical progression. Uh, you guys, if you can do it quicker, fine, but make sure you know what you're doing. Okay, everybody's okay with that? Yeah. Okay, now, now we will define the function absolute x. And this is where I lose a lot of students. This is one of the um, definitions in math that students, for some reason, they find tricky, but it's really just about getting rid of negatives, and how is that done? Okay. Um, how to do this properly? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put a big white square around this, and hopefully we can... Because I don't want to confuse you, and this is I have an easy way to do this. So I'm just going to go like this. And paint it white. Okay, perfect. Hopefully you guys can somehow do what I'm doing on this page somehow make this happen. Okay. So I think you guys have a graph there that you could draw on. You could probably cross out a bunch of stuff you don't need, but maybe just watch for now without uh, writing. So I'm going to write down the function y equals x. And this is from math 10. This is uh, what kind of function? Linear or quadratic or cubic or what? Linear. So it's going to look like a line and what's the slope one remember mx plus b the slope is one and the y-intercept is zero so you start here and you go over one up one over one up one over right which makes sense y is x so you'd have the point one one you'd have the point two two you'd have the point three three and so on right and if the point if x was negative one y would be negative one and you just have this line, right? 
and there's the function y equals x. Put on the arrows, and it's done. There's y equals x. Now, what would happen if I, instead of drawing or sketching y equals x, I'm going to sketch y equals absolute value x. So let's try a few points. Like what happens when x is 1? What's y going to be? 1, right? What happens when x is 2? y is going to be 2. What happens when x is negative 1? It should, normally with this one, when x is 1, y is, or negative 1, x is negative 1. It's the same, right? y is the same as x. But with absolute value, what happens to a negative value? It becomes positive. So what happens is this, you see this negative portion of the graph? It's going to reflect upwards like this, and that was supposed to happen in red. For Okay, so that's for this. The black part in the top right is always like that for both functions. And then what happens is you can see there's like um, a reflection. Do you guys see that reflection? And it's in the x-axis. So why? Because the absolute value function is never allowed to be negative. So you essentially say to yourself, like, you're not allowed to be down here. You're not allowed to be negative. Question? It should be, like, symmetric to this and symmetric to that. Was that, did I answer your question? Well, did, what's your question? It's a reflection of whatever is negative. We'll s like we'll see later. I'll show you. Like <coughs> we'll do absolute value of a quadratic. You know, it might look like uh, like this. So see how some of it's negative there. It'll like reflect up like this, and that's what the absolute value would look like. You get rid of that. So it's always a reflection of the negatives. Not allowed to be negative. Does that make sense? <coughs> okay. So, by the way, how in the heck, let's pick a point, let's pick a point, let's pick a test point, I'll change colors back to black. So let's pick this point right here. Let's say that point was x equals negative 2, y equals negative 2, and it's going to get reflected up here to x equals negative 2, y equals positive 2. So how do you switch this to this? How do you switch a sign? What do you do? How do you switch the sign? What operation? Did you guys catch that? Say it louder. You times it by negative 1. So the y value is multiplied by a negative 1. <coughs> and that will reflect up here. Okay, so hopefully you have an opportunity to sketch some of that on your page. Do you guys still need that? Nobody's writing anything. I think that this is crucial. Maybe you should write it. I'll take attendance while you guys are writing. Okay, on the bottom of the page, you will see, let me zoom in, you will see the formal definition of all this that I've been talking about. Okay, so I'm just going to write it again, and I want you guys to write it with me so you get used to this, okay? So we say, for the function...
the function f of x equal to the absolute value of x. So this is some new function that you're learning about. There's lots of functions we've done. Uh, we've done polynomial function. We've done, um, so we haven't done a lot of functions. But you've seen, in Math 30, you'll do a lot of these, like square root function, exponential function, logarithmic function, trigonometric functions. There's tons of functions out there. And how do we define this one? Well, it's defined piecewise. And this is important if you ever take calculus. Piecewise means the function will be, you know, something for some things, and it'll be something else for some other things. And that's okay. So, you know, I can give you an example of a, a function. And let's just say that uh, for this random function that we're doing, I'm going to say, well, it's um, 1 for x greater than 0. So I do this. It's always 1 if x is greater than 0. But I'll say it's negative 1 for x less or equal 0. So that means for those x values, it's down here. Does that make sense? It's kind of like you're talking to a computer. You'd have to give it like certain um, sp yeah, specific directions for specific um, inputs. So for this input, you're going to get this output. And for this input, you're going to get this output. Okay. <coughs> All right. So the absolute value function, back to this. It's only two possibilities. And we can look back at the picture that I drew above here. Where do you think there's a special spot where things change? The what? Be specific. The what? Where, where is there something special happening? Is there a specific point where things change? Yeah, right here. What's happening at zero? It changes. So for all the x values that are bigger than zero, you are this function. And for all the x values left of 0, you are this function. And what are those two functions? Well, the one on the right is y equals x. And what's the one on the left? y equals negative x. Because we had to times it by negative to flip it, right? So there's just two options. Okay. And if you can understand that and keep that as like your foundation piece for all of this unit, you're going to have some success. So for this function defined piecewise, it's x for x greater or equal 0, and it's negative x for x less than 0. And keep in mind, x can be anything. So, for example, you could switch x to, like, 5x squared. So, like, what if x was 5x squared? Then the function would be 5x squared for this and negative 5x squared for... But we'd have to fit do, a little bit of, we'd do a little bit of tweaks to it. Also, what do you notice about the definition and the greater than, less than? Yeah, so like why is the signs different? So at zero, can it be both? And you just for that for that like threshold point where things change, you just pick one. It'll be this one for that one, and it won't be for the other. So it's just like, how do you word this? You don't want the one point to be on both functions. So everything greater or equal 0, and then everything strictly less than 0. So zero belongs, 0 belongs to this, it's clear, and 0 does not belong to this. So it's all about just belonging. All right. Next page. Okay, so let's do this, let's do this one here. Let's investigate this. 
And you can jot down as much as you want. I'm just going to investigate with the calculator. And you can do the same thing. So everybody going to type in, go zoom 6, make sure your window's normal, zoom 6, and go y equals x minus 3, and just hit graph. Y equals x minus 3, and hit graph. So what do you notice about this function? What's the y-intercept? Negative 3, that just comes from your mx plus b, so maybe you want to jot that down, remind yourself for linear functions. The slope is m, so th it's, where'd my calculator go? The slope is m and the y-intercept is negative 3. So it's going over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. And where does it hit the x-intercept? At 3. Do you have a question? Just a regular one. Just a regular one. Okay. Now, you've seen the regular x minus 3. So this is the original function. So like if you go back to that piecewise, the regular function is this. And then to get the negative version, what are we going to have to do? Multiply the function by a negative 1. So when I go into my calculator, what would happen if I times this function by a negative 1? What would happen to the x? It would happen to a negative x, and the negative 3 would become a positive 3. Graph that. So what are you seeing? Sort of like goes down and then bounces. And we don't care about this stuff at the bottom, do we? Okay. So originally, it was just this line going from quadrant 1 all the way to quadrant 3, right? And then here's that threshold spot at 0. Where that's the spot where it just about goes negative. It's the, br the barrier. So that spot there gets flipped up. And the spot that we're interested in is 3. Because 3 is the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is going to be crucial for this. And then if I just get rid of this and this and just put in uh, math number absolute and then you just type in what the question is saying x minus 3 it does all that for you boom boom okay and I'll just change the window so you can see more of the x to the right to see the symmetry all right, it's just a v-shape so the absolute value is just a v-shaped curve as sym symmetric you know about that uh, x-intercept okay so we done investigating. Oh, where's the where's the class examples? Okay, let's go down to the bottom of this page. This is crucial here. This is what matters. So I want you to write this stuff in for me. You're gonna write down original. And you're gonna write down negative of original. So the original, of course, is your regular graph, and then the negative is the flip, or the mirror, or the reflection, whatever word you want to use. Typically, you'd say reflection. And then what do we put for the conditions for x. Is it x greater or equal 0, x less than 0? No, it wasn't, was it? Where did it, ha what was that key point? So it's not that. You can't just go with 0 every time. It's not true. So back up to my calculator, what was that spot? What was that key spot? It's x3. Okay. So with my pointer here, which one of them was the regular one? This downward or this upward? This upper was the regular graph, right? So it's the regular graph, this one here, if x is greater or equal to 3. Okay, so reading this from left to right, it's the regular graph if x is greater than or equal to 3. 
and it's the reflected graph if x is less than 3. And that's key, and I'll give you a little tip here. This is always the x-intercept. And why is it the x-intercept? Well, that's the spot where y changes from positive to negative. The x-intercept, that's the barrier from positive land to negative land. It's like that, uh, have you guys ever seen that Netflix show? That new one? It's so good. The little kids are running around, getting into all these antics. They, they, got, they, got, the, they got the magic powers. Stranger Things. And that they enter that portal through that tree. That's a good show, right? That portal through the tree. Well, the x-intercept is the portal from positive to negative, right? So, it is. All right. So, next... Okay, so let's define this piecewise function, f at x. Again, this function, depending on x, is defined by some rule. Remember, that's what a function is. It's just a rule. What is the rule here? The rule is take x, multiply, you don't have to write this, multiply by 3, add 2, then take the absolute value. That's a lot, right? Okay. So you should already know that stuff from math 10. You know how to deal with 3x plus 2. So like, what if x was 0? y would be 2. What if x is 1? y is 5. And you could generate this graph like that. You also can use your calculator to do it quickly, but you should understand what's going on. Now, what does it mean to be absolute value? So it's just, this is the easy part. It's the regular version. And it's the, the negative of the regular version. And that's all you have to write. You don't even have to multiply that negative in. Let me just make that a little bit nicer. Now comes the hard part. When is this going to happen? When x is greater or equal and when x is less than. What do I put here? Well, what point matters? the x-intercept. So how to solve for an x-intercept? You make the y 0. So 0 is f of x, right? Remember, f of x is the same thing as y. So 0 equals 3x plus 2. And you know how to do this. You've, you've done it for a t about a month straight. Cover up 3. It would be negative 2 thirds, right? Bring the 2 over. You can do it longhand if you like. You should know it really quickly, though. It's negative 2 thirds. So as long as x is greater or equal to negative 2 thirds, and when x is strictly less than negative 2 thirds. Okay, so I'll let you absorb that for a few seconds. Yep. Okay, you guys ready for the next one? Who's saying no? You're trying to do your... <laughs> okay, next one. Okay. So, y equals the absolute value of 4 minus x. What does this equal? 4 minus x. And then negative of 4 minus x. And then you put commas. And then when does this happen? Okay. Okay.
So you want to find the x-intercept? Is that what you're doing? So 4 minus x is 0. x equals 4. So you want to just write what? x is greater or equal 4. And you want to write what? x is less than 4. So let's see if this is right. Well, let's see if this is right. Okay, type in 4 minus x without the absolute value, without it. So what happened? Where would it flip? You'd have you put pen like that, right? So where is it original? If x is greater or equal 4 or less or equal 4? So there's something happening here. Something weird. Different than the first one, right? The first one I just copied and I was okay. Second one I copied and I'm wrong. So we have to think about what's happening. We have to think about something more than just the x-intercept. We have to think, where is the function positive and where is the function negative? So this is actually bad. We have to think harder. We can't just follow some stinking rule. And let me sketch for you, what is it? Y equals 4 minus x. With a negative slope, it came down like that. Do you agree? Okay. And then with the absolute value, the green, we'd want it to flip up, yeah? Okay, so question. Where are you original? That top part, right? This part here, that's the original. And then here is the reflection of this. So how do we come up with this? Well, when you go to do your absolute value, you have to say to yourself, instead of thinking about just the x-intercept, you have to think about the function. So you ask yourself, where is 4 minus x greater than 0? So where is 4 minus x greater than 0? That's the question. And just without doing any algebra, where is the function 4, x, 4 minus x greater than 0? Where is the function 4 minus x positive? Right here, right? And only there. So it has to be x less than 4, right? Do the algebra, move this x over here, and we have x less than 4. And then we ask ourselves, where is the function 4 minus x less than 0? That's over here, right? Where is this, where is this function 4 minus x? Where is it less than 0? When x is greater than 4. So do the algebra, you see that x is greater than 4. Move the x over. And that's for x this way. Okay, so now I'm going to go to your homework and I'm going to help you do this properly. So you, because we're kind of investigating here. Um, the numerical stuff with absolute value, Carl, very simple. You guys will probably do quite well at that. This part is more challenging. So let's make sure we do this together. Okay, I'll do, um, let's do C and D together. We'll do, yeah, these ones with the piecewise. So please, everybody, um, this is the one thing that's going to get some of you. So please highlight piecewise and make sure you're ready to go for this tomorrow, piecewise. It's going to be the challenging part. Okay, piecewise. Okay, so this function, 
which is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2, will equal the regular version, which is x minus 2, when what? No, when the function is what? It, just the whole function. When the whole function is what? Greater or equal to zero. And when is it the negative version? When this whole function is what? Is less than zero. So if this function is negative, we're going to multiply it by a negative because we don't like negatives. And then you can clean this up just a little bit by moving the twos over. I'll move in a second. Now I'm going to use my cursor and we're going to talk about this because it's better to vocalize this. So everybody with me once you're done writing. What is this called? Everybody. Absolute value function and then this squiggly bracket. What do we call that? Starts with a P. So we have this piecewise function x minus 2 is the original what? Function. When the original function is positive. Okay, and we're going to do the negative of that original function when the original function is negative. So if it's negative, multiply the whole function by a negative. And then we can clean up the right-hand side of that to look like this. Bring the negative over, bring the negative over, and you get this. Okay, everybody try letter D, and then we'll go over it. So everybody just try D, two minutes, and then we're going to go over it. All right, so this function G of X equal to the absolute value of 3 minus X is equal to the original function when the original function is greater or equal to 0 and it's the negative of the original function when that original function is negative. So if the original function is negative, we don't like that, times everything by a negative. Simplify this up and you get the originals and the negative and I, when I simplify to the second step, I like to multiply the negative in, so you have both versions. And then you can clean up this uh, inequality. X comes over. And X comes over. So if X is less or equal to 3, it's the original. If X is greater than 3, it's the negative. You guys got that? Success? Yeah. Alright. So... Spend the rest of the time on numbers uh, 1, 2, and 5. And then if you really want a challenge, go to number 9. Okay, so spend time on um, 1, 2, and 5, and then 9 is your challenge. And of course, do more if you have time. <laughs>